This is the Forex Q&A podcast. This is VP, professional Forex prop trader here in the United States, answering your user-submitted Forex trading-related questions every Monday morning. Now, if you have a Forex trading-related question that is on your mind, it's way too late to ask me. What you need to do instead is check out some of the material on No Nonsense Forex on YouTube and nonsenseforex.com slash blog and see if it has been answered there. If it has not, go to the No Nonsense Forex Discord forum. Link will be provided down below in the show notes and in the video description. So let's lead off with a quick programming note. Uh, yeah, usually when I say there's going to be a programming note, it is not positive, and I don't think this one's going to be either. There will probably not be a new trading video this coming Thursday. Now, there's a chance, but a very small one. Uh, life gets in the way sometimes. And looking forward, it just looks like all things considered, I'm not going to be able to put together, create, edit, and do all that um, in time to have something out on Thursday. So what I'll do uh, is just skip the trading video for this Thursday, and then everything will resume again next Monday with the new episode of the podcast. Not ideal for me, because I had everything mapped out of far as what the remaining videos were going to be for the year and hence the material, but we are just going to have to adjust. Uh, on a much better note though, the first six people who have become professional funded traders, either through their own money or through somebody else's money, due to the things they have learned on No Nonsense Forex are now posted up on the testimonials page on nonsenseforex.com. Now, if you haven't seen this page, it is a page with a form you fill out after you have officially gone pro. And, obviously, if this material had something to do with it. Uh, more than six people filled out the form, but a lot of them didn't fill it out the right way. So it made me believe that these people didn't really know what they were filling out. So, for, for example... And traders don't clown on these people because chances are English is not their first or even second language. So I don't disparage them for this. But, for example, there's a spot for your name, and they put their name. And there's a spot for your city and your country, and they'd say something like South Africa. And then there's another space that says, okay, who is the company who hired you? And they would say, South Africa. So either the South African government hired them to trade Forex on their behalf, or they really don't understand what they're doing. And then the last part says, you know, how did no-nonsense Forex help you become a professional trader? And their response would just be, I love your channel. So chances are they didn't really understand the process. So those people didn't go up, uh, but the six legitimate ones have. And there's probably going to be a lot more in a few months once those initial traders who first signed up for uh, Maverick Trading and Funded Trader actually go through the trial period and finish and then get funded. Uh, so that's going to be really exciting. That list is going to grow quite a bit. Uh, but I know there's some of you out there that have already turned pro and just haven't filled out the form yet. So please do that. And once you have, you will be forever immortalized as the gods and goddesses you are. It is the Forex Q&A podcast, and uh, episode 70 is not going to be like a really like super exciting episode to most people. This is going to be a lot more educational, um, but in a very important way. And I actually think this is incredibly exciting. I'm, I'd be surprised if you didn't think so, too. But because, as a lot of you guys know, we're moving on to other markets, uh, metals and oil, and we're going to add a few other weapons to your arsenal very shortly. Uh, and it is absolutely in your best interest to understand what is at the very core of how we trade all of these other markets. Because I'm telling you, it is a great time to be alive with the technology we have now that people who were just like us 20, 30 years ago had no access to. You really had to have a good chunk of money already sitting around in order to trade or invest anything. And it was very limiting. Some of the best trading talent out there never had a chance to even get off the ground. So even now, for example, I bet you most people think if you want to get in there and trade the stock market and really make any kind of impact at all, you have to start with like $50,000. And you know, if you ever plan on trading more than one stock at a time, 
Now, most people don't have that kind of money lying around, but if they did for some reason, then they get to trade stocks, but then they have to deal with a lot of the restrictions that trading stocks gives you. You know, at least things that seem very restrictive to us as Forex traders. Like your order might not get filled, or it's really hard to short a stock, and all the things that go along with capital gains taxes, you know, all that stuff. But nowadays, and really unbeknownst to so many people, a lot of that stuff just doesn't apply anymore. Um, you can trade what, almost anything nowadays, and you don't have to have a lot of money to do it. Now, if you have very little money, should you still go and trade them anyway? No, you really shouldn't. I mean, episode 33 of the Forex Q&A podcast, Trading with a Small Account. Make sure you have heard that podcast before you start any of this. Uh, but now, trading things like uh, stocks and indices and commodities are much more widely available thanks to a little thing the Australians invented called CFDs, Contracts for Difference. Uh, what these are in a nutshell, I mean, you can go super deep on these. And if you guys want to learn more about them, you really should, I think. But I'm going to just kind of touch on the base level ideas of it. But what you are more or less doing is just trading the price of something. You're not trading the actual thing. So, for example, you won't actually own stock in a particular company. But through these contracts, you're actually trading the price and then making money if price goes your way, and then losing money if price goes against you. And as I said before, actually owning some of these things uh, does have drawbacks to it. Uh, for one, you know, when it comes to not getting your orders filled, which is something that stock traders do struggle with every once in a while, especially if they have a certain price they want to set a stop loss at, um, if things go down fairly fast, there might not be anybody there to buy your falling stock. And while price running beyond our stop loss really only happens on those rare flash crash moments or those really big gaps that you almost never see, you know, this can happen to an actual stock trader a lot more often because of their orders not getting filled. To where we are very spoiled as Forex traders, we always get our orders filled when we want. Uh, really for two reasons, and it's the same with CFDs. One. The market is so liquid, there's always somebody out there to take the other side of your trade if you're dealing with an ECN broker, for example, or you have a dealing desk broker that is just automatically required to take the other side of your trade and my trade and everybody else's trade that actually deals with that particular broker. And CFDs are the same way. They have to take the other side of your trade. Now, I also did a podcast on this, the dealing desk versus ECN broker. I forgot what number it was. But uh, the main point of dealing desk is there's nothing to be afraid of. Dealing desk brokers are required to take the other side of everybody's trade, no matter who it is. Uh, whether that trader is terrible or whether that trader is an amazing trader, they are forced to take the other side of everybody's trade. And this actually does create great opportunities to get your order filled every single time because they physically have to. And this also means they are required to honor your stop loss wherever you put it. And they are required to honor your take profit points wherever you put it. Now, as I just said, things like large gaps and flash crashes and those rare occurrences may not apply. Uh, but outside of things like that, you can rest assured that your order is going to be accepted. And like I was alluding to earlier as well, you can short anything you want just as easy as you can go long. This is phenomenal. I mean, for example, let's say you were more of a long-term trader and the market finally does start to go into recession, which it is bound to do at some point. You're probably not going to want to take many long trades um, to where back in the day, unless you were an options trader and then your trade was limited to how far it could actually go, you really couldn't short an entire index or if you actually could, it was very hard to do. It was much more of a process. To where today you can just click a button. And as soon as you put your numbers in after that, voila, you are in a short trade. And last time the recession actually took place, which was more than 11 years ago, very few people even knew they could do this. Um, and even if they could, there are very few brokers out there that would even have CFDs to offer. Uh, but now anybody can take huge advantage of a recession. I've already told you before how holding precious metals can do this. Want to profit off the recession but don't want to hold a bunch of precious metals? 
fine. Now you can. By riding one of the big stocks all the way down. By riding an entire index all the way down. And it's things like this that make me believe that there's a real reason why the big recession has not happened yet, even though it should have by now. You guys know me. I always think there are greater powers at play, like greater human powers that are pulling the strings. Uh, Because no matter what happens, and really especially in recessions, the mega rich become even more mega rich. Because I really do think there are decision makers at the top that decide when these huge financial events actually start to take place. And because they all follow the same pathology. It's like Warren Buffett said, when there's blood in the streets, you buy. Now, the opposite side of that would be when everybody out there is saying go long on the stock market, that's exactly the point in time when it's going to crash. And that is what happened in 2008. Everybody wanted to go long the stock market back in 2008. Don't believe me? They made an entire movie about really the only five major players in the game that knew a big recession was coming. And I think out of those five, a few of those had to be convinced Now, I'm sure there were other people out there talking about it, but very, very few, to the point to where those five people were ridiculed the entire movie until the market actually started to fall. And the movie, for those who don't know or are too young to know, was called The Big Short. Great movie, by the way. Um, But since then, social media has blown up so much. You have so much more education out there now than you had back then, especially on the financial side. Nowadays, the people who are thinking the market's going to crash any time now are still in a pretty big minority, but that minority is much, much larger than it was back in 2008. You have entire podcasts hosted by people that are telling you the entire financial market is going to come crashing down and highlighting every single reason why. And the major financial networks out there are still trying to block it out the best they can, but there's only so much they can do. Education has spread. And many, many more people now understand the warning signs, understand all of the things that happened before previous recessions and how a lot of those things are happening right now. And even though there's not many of us, it's still enough people to where we just haven't been able to get that great stock market euphoria out there that we need right before everything comes crashing down. And not only that, we are now armed with things like CFDs and a couple other things I'm going to talk about in later videos to help us come out huge winners when this recession finally does hit. To date, there have already been a number of downward fakes trying to get us to make a move too soon. And if I was going to make a prediction, I would say there's probably going to be a few more. But the overall point, no matter where you think the market is going to go, is that no matter which way it goes now, we can do something about it, and we can trade it every single trading day, thanks to CFDs. Now, Americans, I know we don't have access to this. Like I said before, find a way. I'm not sure how much time you have left until things really start to fall in the stock market. But when the time does come, you are going to want to take advantage of these because this really opens up the game to everybody regardless of income level. So those of you out there who are from a place to where you just don't make any money in the grand scheme of things, if you have a laptop and you can trade, you can still become very good at this and then be able to shop yourself out there to people who might be really interested in somebody who is really, really good at trading oil, for example. Or really good at trading the Nifty, which is India's stock market index. So many different ways to trade. So many different things that the generations before us did not have. So many ways for you to become an expert in a sea of bullshit-ass experts. And so many different ways for you to become an actual professional trading actual large sums of money just like the initial six people who filled out the form over at nonsenseforex.com slash testimonials. They are only the beginning. That list is going to grow and grow and grow, especially because now you can do more than just Forex. You can go out there and now dominate any market you want. And I'm going to do my best to show you how. So let's everybody give a collective thank you to the country of Australia for giving us CFDs and Crowded House. 
Let's give a big thank you to Al Gore for inventing the internet. And let's just embrace the modern day. We have nothing to complain about. There are more ways to make money and make a great living than there have ever been in recorded history. Like, by far. But the spoils of this war, just as they always have, go to the ones that actually stand up and take it. Might as well be you. So go get it.